Hello. With me today is Dr. Connor Cunningham, a colleague who has done an extensive study of the question of evolution and theology. So, Connor, why would a theologian be looking at evolution? Goodness. Um, well, there are a number of reasons. Uh, the reason I started to look at it uh, myself, because I was on a stag do, and in Dublin, funny enough. All right, the town we both know well, yeah. yes. And I was studying at Cambridge at the time, but I went on a stag do at Dublin, and I met up a friend of mine from Northern Ireland, where I'm from, and he, he was a, I asked him, what are you doing? We're walking down O'Connell Street after far too many Guinness. And I said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm an investment banker. And back then that wasn't a bad thing. It wasn't rhyming slang for something else. Right. And he said, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm doing theology. And this guy had been brought up a religious person his entire life. But he said to me, but I thought evolution, I thought Darwin had got rid of theology. And I said, sorry? Well, maybe in Oxford, but certainly not in Cambridge. <laughs> and so that got me interested in thinking, right, I might, must look into this. And then there's the historical, when you look into it, there's the historical, cultural debate between religious people's opposition, Christians' opposition to, not just Christians, but religious people's opposition to evolution and Darwinism. You know, the common ancestors coming from monkeys, all this stuff which seems to humiliate us. And you think, wow, this is just awful. I mean, you see this historically. But actually when you look at it, and then you hear, sorry, you also hear people like Dawkins, Richard Dawkins, Daniel Dennett, people like that, use evolution as a vehicle for atheism. They will use it as, a, as an expose, as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a, you are not made in the image of God, the Imago Dei. You are a monkey. You're a monkey. There's nothing angelic about you. Just like, so goodness, you think, wow. So culturally, historically, and they would also argue at times, well, scientifically, and also, in a sense, philosophically. Um, but what you find when you look at it, well, it's all stuff and nonsense. I mean, it's all nonsense. I mean, it's just nonsense. The, 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 the controversy itself was a, a modern invention. For example, most of the opponents of Darwin, when he published The Origin of Species, were atheists, atheist scientists, thinking, well, that's all a lot of rubbish. There's no proof for this. There's no proof for this. But we are given these urban myths that it was Wilberforce versus Huxley. It was mm. Darwin versus the church. It was, you know, God versus the monkey in some sense. But it, 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 it's nonsense. But what's very, very good for theologians is that it, it's almost like a good exercise, not only in metaphysics and philosophy, but it's a good exercise in systematic theology, in that it makes you examine your own understanding of Christianity, your own understanding of embodiment, your own understanding of materiality, and to see whether you're a heretic or not. So in a sense, it's like an inquisition. You are a heretic because you oppose evolution. Now, it's not that evolution needs to be embraced in a sense like it's a sufficient and necessary reason for Christianity or religion. No, not at all. But it does expose our prejudice, our sense of vanity, ontological and otherwise. For example, we, 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 we hate the fact that we have come, we share a more common ancestor with the great apes than we do with other uh, creatures. And we, we find that an insult, a humiliation. But we've absolutely no problem, from the evangelical to the whatever, it, we've no problem in believing in a guy called Jesus. Yeah, a guy called Jesus. Who's this guy, Jesus? A first century Palestinian Jew who passed through a vagina and underwent mammalian birth with blood, excrement, and sweat. And then when he survived that, well, they kicked the living daylights out of him and then killed him. And apparently, that's God incarnate. We have no problem with that. 
yet we have a problem with evolution. God can become man, God can go through mammalian birth, yet our vanity isn't insulted by that. We want to be angels. We want to be angels. We don't want creation. It's vanity. It's in fact, in a, in a sense, evolution brings, recalls, brings to our attention, in a sense, the fall. We want to be Luciferian. We want to be, we can't believe that matter could it be any way good. We, we're, we're Gnostics, you know, we're pagans. Uh, so it's amazing. We, we have no, we, we, all these crucifixes all around the place, people wearing crosses. That's God. Don't show us any apes. Hmm. Looks like we're heretics. Looks like we've forgotten what it is to be Christian. One thing that always amazes me, um, if you know, I've never, I've never seen the great apes in Africa, but I've, you know, I've been in zoos, mm. and you see, a, you see a chimp, mm. and you see the way. You know, when I was a child, you went to Dublin Zoo. There were chimps. The trick was to throw them a peanut, mm. and the amazing thing was mm. that a chimp would grasp it, mm. and the chimp would grasp it because it had a power grip, mm. the hand, dexterity, and of course, yeah. the power grip is driven by a little Absolutely. thing, a carpal tunnel. Absolutely. And without the carpal tunnel, you can't do that. Mm. So you can't have a tool. And the, I often think the whole of our universe, this studio, mm. my jacket, everything, hammering in a nail, it's all driven by the carpal tunnel. Mm. So I'm actually quite, I'm actually quite, um, I'm actually quite pleased to be related to the great apes and the chimps because it strikes me that uh, the carpal tunnel is just such a wondrous thing that I cannot believe, I, 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 just, I just find that the, because, because I have a power grip, I can hold things, I can think mm. about mm. things, mm. I can investigate things in the, with, the, with the rationality of the tool. Mm. So I actually find that the, 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 I'm honoured to be related to the great apes because I find there, um, uh, maybe I'm very primitive, I actually see order in the universe. Well, you're Irish, you have to be primitive. Okay, right. But, well, I, but, I, I, but, no, I realise I'm closer to the great <coughs> apes. Yeah. But um, I think we both are. But... Uh, <laughs> The two things quickly about that, you know, what happened uh, there was a nail was stuck through that on the one hand with the crucifixion, disabling that. It's really interesting if you use that symbolically, hmm. yeah. On the second hand, you have to think, people always say we're related to the great apes, related to monkeys, you just mentioned chimpanzee, related to, you know, the animal world. Yes, yeah, absolutely. But there's an elephant in the room to whom we're also related, mm -hmm. they're related to us. They're related to us. So rather than it being the descent of man, as Darwin famously called it, it's also the ascent of the animal. It's the ascent of the animal. You'll often hear evolutionary psychologists, evolutionary theorists say, oh, look at the ducks, they're raping each other. And I, I, I have ducks outside my house and they're always, it's a nightmare. And you look at chimpanzees committing genocide, we'll say, they use these words. Therefore, ergo, therefore, we are like ducks and chimpanzees. But isn't that, in some sense, their implicit sense of their humanity? They're almost approaching humanity where they can commit such atrocious acts. Yeah? Because we are the species that wrote... King Lear, The Origin of Species, and also Mein Kampf. That's amazing. It's amazing that the species was able to do that. So why is it a humiliation to be related to the great apes or, or the rest of physical, biological life? Why is it only one way? Why can't it be the other? When you hear these stories in the paper about, oh, a chimpanzee or a, um, a crow, or something, it seems to be using tools. Hmm. And you go, aha, therefore, we are no longer any good. Yeah, the image of God is gone. We are no longer, why can't it be an, why can't it be the other way that they're almost coming towards us? They're almost becoming, they have an implicit Imago Dei in that sense. Hmm. Yeah, Th they're almost becoming human. Why is it we are becoming, why is that a humanity? Why are we becoming animal? That's just ideology. That's not argued for. There's no argument for it, demonstrably so. It's no argument. 
It's just, a, it's just assumed. I mean, a classic example of that, if you like, is, um, and this, this actually happened to me. Um, on, I was reading a Sunday paper, and it said, there is no life in the universe apart from on Earth. Therefore, humans are meaningless. And the next week, it said, life may be all across the universe, throughout the universe, therefore, humans are meaningless. I don't know how to falsify that. This is just ideology. This is just fundamentalism. This is not philosophy. This is not thinking. This is wishful thinking, not argued thinking. Wishful thinking. And in a sense, you have children, you have a lover, and there's a sense, well, if for Christianity, God became incarnate and was the God-man, yeah? So fully human, fully divine in one person as a council of Galcedon argued. Why is it that, you know, when we have our lovers and our children and you think, well, you know, I know my children uh, are mammals. I know that they crap every morning. I know that they burp. I know that they are selfish. I know that they sweat. I know, but I also know that they're baptized and they're called a name. So they're almost human and divine at the same time. They have a name, yeah? They have a name. And that's so unbelievably important because you can't reduce people to numbers like the Holocaust. you are just given a number. You're baptized in the name. Where are you, Adam? Where are you, Adam? This collection of materiality has been baptized as a name, an irreducible name, which if you hurt, if you kill, if you harm, you're harming a person. And we know what are our lovers too. We know that we know our lovers, no matter how sexy they are, no matter how erotic we get about them. We know, for example, I, I'm a male heterosexual. We know. You know, my lover has a menstrual cycle. That's just mammalian. I know that we all have to wash. I know that we all have to, you know, we all have to eat. I know that we all have to drink. I know we all have to do all these things. Is that an insult? Or is that more miraculous? Our notions of divinity tend to be very, very slight. And all heresies, actually, are a complete failure of imagination where we can't keep the divine and the natural together. We go Jedi Knight, or we go purely natural. We always have Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know, hovering immaterially after his death, or we go, oh, we're just merely elephants or apes or monkeys. But actually, Christianity has a story which is so profound that it keeps it together, and that's called orthodoxy. And that is radical. In fact, it's a revolution. In fact, it's never been thought of in the world ever in any philosophy or any religion because you always fall down on one side or the other. All spiritual and spooky are all merely natural. Only by keeping them together do you have the two. Connor, if we were to pick a book, which one would you recommend? On evolution? Yes. Uh, I suppose, um, I don't know. Uh, uh, how about Darwin's Pious Oh, Lady? my book. Oh, sorry. I was thinking yes, of someone yes, else's. Yes, um, yes. And, and, and here's the interesting thing. Before, yes, Darwin's Pious Idea, my book, I, I, would, I would recommend. Okay, good. <laughs> good. Um, and which has also been reviewed by atheist scientists in professional journals who have lauded it, and also archbishops who've lauded it in journals. So it, 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 it has been, thank God, um, been well received. But, but what's interesting with evolution is that there's so many atheists coming out now against it. Yeah, Jerry Fodor wrote a book out, Famous Philosopher of Mind. Thomas Nagel is bringing a book out in the autumn. All atheists having a right pop at the Dawkinsian new atheist take on materialism and evolution. The atheists are trying to undermine the atheists because they know they're talking nonsense. Just like we, as theologians, you know, fundamentalists, creationists, you know, biblical literalists, are talking nonsense. They're doing it themselves. Connor, on that 
very uh, balanced note to both extremes. Thank you. Pleasure.